Welcome to our second demo for Adobe Document Cloud eSign services. I'm logging into the portal with the account that has been created by my administrator for me and we're going to go sign an incident report um, that is a HIPAA compliant document and show you how to use the advanced features uh, of the product. So I'm going to sign in. Same thing as before, I always start out at the dashboard and I can look at all the activity that's currently waiting documents for me to sign documents that I've signed and my statistics. But as I said before, nine out of 10 times I go in here to get a document signed and that's where we start. So we get a document to sign. And so in this case, I'm gonna pick two parties. I'm gonna use uh, my Carlson CSX21 user, the Peter Scorpentino, and I'm gonna throw in my personal uh, Gmail account in there as a secondary signer just so you can see uh, something with more than one uh, person in it. So they're going to be in the order entered. So Carlson will sign first, Peter Mott will sign second, and then Peter Mott at OCCMHA.org will sign last. So we have a three-party signature route for this document, but everything else is the same. I'm going to give this a document name. So this is an incident report paper form that was filled out on, on paper and uh, given to me. I took it over to a Toshiba multifunction scanner and scanned it in as a PDF file. And that's how I got my source document. Um, also going to do some fancy things with it. Please attach any other documentation. I actually have the ability to sit there and when I'm having the user fill out the form, give me any supporting information. So attach a Microsoft Word document, an Excel document, uh, more than likely something like a photo or other PDF documents, maybe a scanned in police report or some other type of documentation uh, can all be done during the signature process. So I've got all of these filled out. I'm gonna go upload my scanned in document. So this is my hand filled out report. Okay, now what I'm going to do here, and this is pretty interesting, identity verification. Uh, up until now, we've been basically sending this out to Peter Scorpentino uh, for signature, assuming that we know him, have dealt with him before. However, if it's somebody that we're signing something to and we've never met this person and we can't vouch for their identity, there's actually ways we can do that. We can actually password protect the document. So this would be a pre-shared password. So I, in fact, know that Peter Scorpentino is signing this document and nobody else because I've spoken to him on the phone or met him in person and given him a pre-shared password so he would not be able to open the document and sign it. It's not an encryption password, it's just that he won't be able to do the signature process. So it's not encryption, it's just a way to verify his identity. You're verifying his identity because there's something that he knows that no one else other than him would know, a pre-shared password. These other two are pretty interesting. Knowledge-based authentication is actually going to take Peter Scorpentino and run him through the same kind of thing like when you do a credit check, such as it will sit there and show four addresses and you have to pick the address that you never lived at. So it's using information that's in the public domain. Or it may ask for part of a SOCH number or it may ask for uh, where you last did or didn't get a car loan from. So it's going to pull information that, again, validates that Peter Scorpentino is, in fact, that person based upon him knowing pertinent private information. Social identity is something new since everybody does social networking. We're going to actually use either Google, Facebook, or LinkedIn and actually ask the user to authenticate and based upon, so we're asking Facebook, is this Peter Scorpentino? Or we're asking Google, is this Peter Scorpentino? So it's a s or we're asking LinkedIn, is this Peter Scorpentino? So we're basically using a second um, method uh, to validate who the person is. So these are, so I'm gonna use the social identity because Peter Scorpentino is a fictitious person and so it would fail otherwise. However, since he does have a Google Gmail account, that will validate him. Now this is the encrypted option here. So when I say set password to open the signed PDF, this is where I put in a pre-shared password. This is a pre-shared password so that after the whole signature process is done, 
and the PDF is actually created, remember it's sent as an attachment in plain, you know, over email, non-encrypted email. And this way the attachment will be protected that if anybody were to download it, they cannot open the signed finished PDF file without this password. If you forget this password, well, you're hosed, quite frankly. There's no way to unencrypt the document. There's no master password. So it's very, very important that you come up with some sort of standard uh, way to remember these passwords or have one password for each provider, clinician, or however you're going to do that. But this will give you a HIPAA-compliant PDF file that cannot be tampered or opened by anybody else. So this one is for verifying the identity, and this one's for the actually encrypting of the final product, the final PDF. All right, now I'm going to do my preview. So those are the advanced options. Identity and encryption. Going to hit next. So here is my actual incident report that was scanned in. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is going to go down here and I'm going to place my signature fields just as before. So I'm going to use the basic uh, signature field here. I'll grab this one and I'll drag it down here. And then I'm going to edit it, and I make sure, okay, this one's going to be signed by Peter Scorpentino, the Carlson user. Now, a couple other things that I can use here is signer information fields. So I know the signer's name and the email and the date I can get from the computer, so I can actually take the signer's name so that they don't have to fill this out, and it'll just automatically populate this and fill this in for me. So there's the signer's name, again, checking. It's going to put in uh, Peter Scorpentino. And then I can also drag a date field down here. And this will automatically put in the date. And again, I'm making this for Peter Scorpentino. So these three fields are all related to him during the signing. I'm scrolling down a little bit further because this had a secondary signature. So I'm going to use the, go back to signature fields. I'm going to take the signature and drag this one down here. And I'm going to say, uh, let's uh, have this one signed by the Mott Peter user. And I'll also drag his name down here. And I'll drag the date down here. And making sure all of these are set for the Peter Mott Gmail user. And then I'll throw the last one. I'm just going to throw it in here. I'm going to use the signature block. And I'm just going to put that in here. And the Peter Mott CMH user will sign here. So I've got three different people signing this particular document. Now something else that I can do here that we talked about that's pretty interesting is I can go to more fields and I can do <coughs> attachments. So I can drag down, I'm going to put in uh, one, two attachment fields here. I'm making them optional and I'm going to assign them to, I'm going to make um, the Peter Scorpentino user actually be the one that actually is going to submit these. So basically, I'm going to ask him to attach any supporting documentation when he signs this or before he signs this, uh, you know, within the system. So in this case, I'm going to have him put, uh, hey, did the person have uh, a privacy policy notice? I want that. <coughs> and I also want, uh, do you have any pictures or evidence or police report or any other supporting documentation you can include with this incident report during the process? So I've got everything set up to go. I'm going to send this. Out it goes. Again, here is the copy, so if I want to set reminders or notifications or nag people, I can tweak that at this point in time. So I'm switching hats. Uh, here comes uh, the Peter Scorpentino user. So notice a couple things uh, like we showed that are different. The document is locked, so the preview is not shown because you have to prove your identity. Um, 
and then it's showing that there's uh, file attachments that are required and then it also shows that after you sign it where it's going next so you get to see the route so I click it now it says this document requires identity verification and remember what we said is that uh, you know we want to use Google to validate Peter Scorpentino so I click that goes out if I wasn't logged in it would ask me for uh, my password my Google password Peter Scorpentino's Google password logs in so my identity has been verified by the outside provider which in this case is Google and I'm off to the races here to start so I start I sign notice these two fields automatically populated now those other fields are optional so they're not required to fill them out but I'm, I'm gonna go ahead in here so I'm gonna do an attachment I'm gonna put that privacy practices document in there and I'm gonna use the second one I'm gonna put the picture that I got from uh, the the actual incident so I have filled out all everything that I need I'm gonna click it to sign and off it's going to the next person okay so now it's gone to the Peter Mott Gmail account so I'm stepping to the side here and I'll do this on another machine real quickly just to complete the process So right now, Peter Mott at gmail.com, the secondary person is signing the document, you know, and they could be anywhere in the world. And now what they're seeing is also the PDF, those, the um, supplementary information that was uploaded, the other PDF, the privacy notice practice, and that picture, that's been appended to the bottom of the PDF. So now he's seeing the IR that was scanned in plus those other two documents as one big PDF and he's signing basically the whole thing. Okay, so he's completed. So I'm going to slide Peter Scorpentino off to the side here and then Peter Mott comes in and he'll have the final notification. So it's been signed by the Peter Mott Gmail user. Okay, and now here is the final one for me, the final signature. It's, it's come full circle, it's come home for me to sign as the last signer. I start. I sign. And that's it and notice see there's the IR and then here's that privacy practice notice remember who put that in that was uh, Carlson CSX 21 Peter Scorpentino put that in as an attachment and notice here is the actual photo that we got from the incident so everything's all together click to sign we're all done go back to email refresh here it is so the IR incident report between Oakland County Community Mental Health Peter Scorpentino and the Peter Mott has all been signed and here is the final document now notice it's attached so I'm going to download it I'm going to open it with Adobe Acrobat. Yep. Notice it's asking for a password because we used encryption. So here, I could have done that in Reader, but here in the full version of Adobe because you can see all of the elements password protected has all the signature boxes 
It has the supplemental information that Peter, Car um, Peter Scorpentino put in. It has the actual picture. And then here, notice this. This is the, the document that shows everything that happened, where it went. And see, it even actually shows that validation by that third party. So this shows the Peter Scorpentino was verified or identified by Google. So this will actually show who, uh, you know, proved who that person was. So all of that information all inside a PDF, a PDF that's encrypted, a PDF that I can do whatever I need, send it, email it, put in an electronic record, but no matter what I do, I can't modify that PDF and it's locked down with a password, it's encrypted, it's certified, so it's golden. And that is it.